If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. In order to calculate the tangential acceleration, we can start with the equation for tangential acceleration. And in that equation, we know that the tangential acceleration is equal to the radius times the angular acceleration. We actually don't know the angular acceleration directly, but we can use the equations of rotational kinematics to find the angular acceleration. So we're actually going to do that first. And according to those equations, we know that the final angular velocity is going to equal the initial angular velocity plus the angular acceleration times the time interval. We can solve this equation for the angular acceleration by first subtracting the initial angular velocity over to the left-hand side. And then we can divide both sides by the time t. So here is the expression for angular acceleration, and we can substitute that expression in for alpha of our tangential acceleration equation. Now the question notes that the radius, well actually it notes that the diameter of the disk is 10 inches, so if we cut that diameter in half we would have the radius. So we can actually fill in 5 inches for the radius. And it turns out that inches is not a standard unit, so we're going to have to convert that into meters in just a moment. We have the final angular velocity given to us as 78 revolutions per minute. That's also a non-standard unit, so we'll have to convert that into the standard unit of radians per second. So that's omega f. Omega initial would be the initial angular velocity, but the question notes that this disk starts from rest. So the initial angular velocity would be zero radians per second, and then we'll divide that by the time that's given as three seconds. Now as noted, inches is a non-standard unit, so we're going to have to convert that into meters, and it turns out that one meter is approximately 39.37 inches. And so if we set up the conversion factor in that manner, we can see that the inches in the numerator will cancel with the inches in the denominator, giving us meters, which is a standard unit. And then we'll also have to convert the revs per minute into radians per second. And it turns out that in one revolution, we would have two pi radians. In this way, the revs in the numerator cancel with the revs in the denominator. And then, of course, we know that one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. So that minutes in the denominator cancel with the minutes in the numerator. We can now pick up our calculators and process this rather lengthy calculation. And we end up with approximately 0.346. And our unit, we can see, has meters over seconds. So it would be meters per second and in fact, there's another seconds there. So we actually have two uh, seconds in the denominator, so that makes seconds squared. And so this would be the correct answer to part A. For part B, to calculate the final tangential velocity, we can consider the tangential velocity equation, which tells us that the tangential velocity is equal to the radius multiplied by the final angular velocity. Once again, we know that the radius is five inches, which we will convert to meters in just a moment. And then the final angular velocity was 78 revolutions per minute. We're going to have to set up the same conversion to change that into meters per second. So we'll go ahead and change the inches and the revs per minute. We've set up the conversions so that the inches cancel as well as the revolutions and the minutes. And when we do that, we're left with meters over seconds. And when we compute that, we should get approximately 1.04 meters per second for the tangential velocity, the final tangential velocity. So this is the answer to part B. Now part C is a bit of a trick question because it's asking for the tangential acceleration one second after the bug starts from rest. Now we calculated the tangential acceleration three seconds after the bug had started from rest, but the tangential acceleration is a constant value. The question even notes that the disk is accelerating uniformly, so that means constantly. So the tangential acceleration that we found in part A will be the same as the tangential acceleration for part C. So the correct answer to part C is that same value. It's 0.346 meters per second squared. So a bit of a trick question there with part C. For part D, the centripetal acceleration, we know that that is equal to the tangential velocity squared divided by the radius. 
Now we know the radius, of course. We just have to work on finding the tangential velocity one second after the bug starts from rest. Well, we know that the final tangential velocity would equal the initial tangential velocity plus the tangential acceleration times the time. The initial tangential velocity was zero because it started from rest. The tangential acceleration we had found to be 0.346 meters per second squared, and then the time stated in the question is one second. So when we compute that, of course, we get 0.346 meters per second, nice and easy. So we'll take that value for the tangential velocity, and we'll square it, and then we'll divide by the radius. Remember, we have to change the radius from inches into meters. And we recall that one meter is the 39.37 inches. So we just got to make sure we keep doing that conversion. And we should get roughly 0.943 meters per second squared for the centripetal acceleration. Now to figure out the total acceleration, what we can do is draw a circle. And we note that we actually have two accelerations, the centripetal and the tangential. The centripetal acceleration will always point towards the center of the circular path. And so we can label that AC. And then the tangential acceleration will always point well, tangent to the circular path. Now it's actually going to be useful instead of keeping that tangential acceleration located right here, which would be correct, we're actually going to slide it over because it's going to help us find the total acceleration. So we'll place it right there, still pointing upward, and we'll label that a sub t. And then we can see that the total acceleration is simply going to be the vector sum of those two. So we build up a right triangle and we use Pythagorean theorem to find this total acceleration. And maybe we can mark that a. So therefore, a squared is going to equal the tangential acceleration squared plus the centripetal acceleration squared. If we square root both sides of this equation, then a would be as follows. And then we'll just go ahead and plug in the known values that we had found earlier. We've omitted the units for clarity. When we process that, we should get roughly one meter per second squared. So this would be the magnitude of the total acceleration and then we can also find the angle. We can mark that angle theta here. We can see from our right triangle that the tangent of that angle would equal the opposite side, which is the tangential acceleration divided by the adjacent side, the centripetal acceleration. If we take the inverse tangent of both sides, we're going to be able to calculate this angle. We'll fill in the tangential acceleration, omitting the unit for clarity, and then the centripetal acceleration. And when we process that, we should get roughly 20.1 degrees. So this would be the correct answer for the direction of the total acceleration. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up and also subscribe. Send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.